But there comes a point where the game changes, where it's not just about working hard, it's about working smarter. Business is my game. And so when I see the money coming in, that is my score. Take ownership of it. Be accountable and then deliver your checklist and it will, it'll happen. Just just be yourself. Don't, don't dress it up. Too many people like to talk. And what happens is when you talk, you drown out all the stuff around you. You're listening to the Remote Revolution Show, the show that brings insights from industry experts across the world of digital business. So you too can take your business online, travel the world and live with freedom. If you're new to the show, the podcast is produced every Tuesday for your enjoyment and show notes can be found at www.remoterevolutionshow.com. Come back often and feel free to add the show to your favorites in your YouTube, Spotify and iTunes feeds. If you want to follow us on social media, which you should because we're awesome, join the community by searching for at Remote Fit Pro, where you'll find daily content to help you explore the remote revolution oh yeah and if you want to connect with us individually you can do that too via the links in the show notes now let's get into this week's episode with your hosts james moody and george crawshaw hello welcome back to the remote revolution show super excited to have you here with us on the sofa here in nashville tennessee we're a, we're actually taking a bit of a reclined position right now because we've had a crazy crazy busy week been doing lots of traveling but today this episode is, has been put together for you because we have got some of our best guests from recent episodes. We put four of them together, just four. It was quite difficult to pick the four, and uh, there's definitely more compilations like this we can do uh, with some more incredible guests. But this week, we have put some really, really relevant content together for you, and myself and James here are going to take you through it. So get yourself a pen and paper because we're going to learn some different topics today. It's going to be a bit of a, a mashup of some, some really great, great insights from different people. Get yourself a pen and paper, a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and uh, start getting ready to make some notes, James. That's what they've got to do, right? Indeed. So we're going to kick it off for you guys on this compilation with Mr. Mike Yander. So if you listen to the original episode with Mike, you'll know he has a company called Laptop Empires, and he's a bit of a Facebook ads ninja. George, you spent a lot of time learning ads from him. Yeah. Real ninja, he's uh, he he's he's been doing this a while. He's been doing some really 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 good stuff in the in the fitness industry specifically for Facebook ads, and he has got a fantastic mindset about how he started his business out. That's why we've picked him for this chunk today. And you know, since he said this, we've actually been really kind of taking what he taught on that episode kind of into our own business as well. Yeah, it's interesting. So to give you guys a little bit of preamble before you hear Mike speak, his whole ethos in business is money is a vehicle that allows you to do things. And this has been something that I think a lot of people are scared to talk about in business. They're afraid to, to mention like the money and the importance of it. And it's all about impact, impact, impact. But this happened recently, actually, when I was in America, in Florida, at Vince Del Monte, who's also in this episode, at his seven-figure mastermind, he had Joel... Marion speak and he's got a podcast called Born, Born to Impact and Joel runs like he's hugely successful like hugely we're talking like you know eight nine figure company here and his whole thing is like you need to make enough money to then be able to create impact and that's what Mike's talking about here he's like when you have financial wealth then you can spread your message much further so that's really what Mike talks about today is like yep. get the money in the bank account that's what matters and then you can start to worry about all the fancy stuff on the back end yeah Let's bring Mike in and uh, you enjoy this little chunk from Mike. I don't think a lot of people start a side business with the idea that they're only going to do it for a few years. Like that was what I did. And so when I first started, I think I started making money quicker because I was like, I'm going to make money for three years on this and then I'm done with it because I'm going to go be a lawyer. Right. Um, so I was just like, I don't care about any of the bullshit. I don't care about social media. I don't care about my peers liking me. I don't care about being Insta famous or whatever. I'm just going to go make money. And I focused only on the things that were gonna make me money. And then, and that was all I was doing. I wasn't doing anything else. I wasn't trying to scale it beyond a certain point. It was just like, I'm gonna make some money from this. When I was like, okay, I'm actually gonna really make an effort at this. Like I'm really gonna make this into a business. Everything changed then. Because then what I started thinking about was, how do I take on more clients? How do I grow this? How do I earn more? And so then I really started looking at situations like, how do I get more leads in the door for myself? Because it was all word of mouth for me at that time, right? Like, how do I get more le leads in? How do I get somebody to do the service delivery for me? 
that was when I hired my first person, brought him on to take some of the like, basically let him do a lot of the tasks that could focus on strategy, focus on sales, those sorts of things. I started investing money into it in the form of paid advertising. I had done that with the fitness business, but I hadn't done that with the agency business. So it was, it was more thinking long-term, like how do I build this into something that's going to last 10, 15, 30 years from now, instead of how do I do just enough of something that has a three-year lifespan as I'm doing stuff like with the podcast. Now I'm starting to become more, have more of a presence online, you know, starting a YouTube channel. We have the podcast going, like I'm starting to put out content because I never really was a content producer. I actually had a hard time getting into that because I was looking at it as like, I don't, I didn't necessarily want to be famous. I just wanted to have money. Like I just wanted to be wealthy. I didn't want the, the, when I say famous, I don't mean like literally famous, but I didn't want to have people to know me or, or anything like that. And now I'm watching this whole personal brand, you know? Um, but that was a hard decision for me. So I think a lot of people, they come into this and they want the social media following. They want all those kind of things. That's a vanity metric. Like who gives a shit, right? Even now, as I'm building that up, like, you know, like I'm doing it for a purpose and that is to kind of make money. Now I will tell you my purpose, like with laptop empires, we've got kind of these three principles that we've built the whole business on. And the first one is make money so we can create a, an amazing life for ourselves and our family. That's number one. Number two is teach people how to make money so they can make an amazing life for themselves and their family straight up. Like that's like, um, you know, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce just dropped their new album recently. And there's a song called Boss. And one of the lines is, we measure success by how many people are successful next to you. And when that dropped, my business partner and I were like, that's our message. That's our goal. That's our mission. Like in a lyric, that's really freaking cool. And then the third part is like, have a good time doing it. What is the point of having a business if you're not going to have fun with it? You know? So like, when we do our webinars for our trainings, we call them happy hour trainings because we pretty much everybody comes on, a glass of wine, a glass of bourbon, a beer. We get drunk and we talk about growing businesses, and it's awesome, right? And so you've got to have fun. Like I mentioned, we've got a teddy bear logo because we we're like, why not? We can do whatever we want. We're going to have fun with it. People love it, right? So for for me, it's, it's more about, um, you know, just kind of having a good time. It is about the money. Like it is straight up, you know, I can get on here. You know, people talk about their big why and all that kind of stuff all the time. And this is funny because my business partner, he has that kind of traditional why of like, I want to support my family. I want to have like this great lifestyle. I want to do this. I want to do that. I have that too. Don't get me wrong. I'm a dad, I've got kids, love my kids. I love my family. I want them to have an awesome lifestyle, but I don't wake up every day. And like, that's not the thing that makes me tick. The thing that makes me tick, I want to beat everybody. Like, I seriously, I look at everybody else that's doing whatever they're doing, and I see what they're doing, and I'm like, I'm coming for you. Like, that's what it is. So, like, even the money, it's a motivator for me, not because I want to have a bunch of money, but it's kind of like, you know, people are, are there's people that play video games. I'm not one of them. Good for you. You can go spend your life making fake money on an MMO. That's cool. Business is my game. And so, when I see the money coming in, that is my score. If that number is going up, I'm winning. If it's going down, I need to reassess my strategy. So like that is a big motivator for me. And I didn't come into this. I want to help people like that. Like I said, that second thing in there where, it, where I said I want to help people. That is a huge aspect of this. I'm pretty cool if nobody goes onto my Instagram profile. If nobody emails me, my Facebook page, pretty sure it has like 50 likes. I don't care. I feel like a lot of people that are like, I want to change the world. They're not being honest with themselves. They're definitely not being honest with you on the podcast. So wicked stuff from Mike there. And I really love his approach about how he makes business his game, right? When the money is going up, that's his score. It's super, super cool. And some really, really key points that we take from this is about the whole social media thing. You know, mm. he's, he's just like, we don't need to be insta famous to grow a business. I think he said he's got like, what, 50 likes on his page. And, you know, this guy's like probably grown since we, he, we did that actual interview. But this guy's built a seven figure business by focusing on building a business and not trying to be insta famous. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's a shift happening in the industry now. People have started to realize that followers and likes don't mean you've got a business. They're two opposing goals. And I've been speaking about this a lot. There's a difference between fame and actually being a successful business owner. They're two different things. People have got the metrics messed up today where they think when they see a page with 100,000 followers, they think that person's successful in business. It's like, no, that's not how it works at all. So only successful in business is spending their time serving their customers, building a better product. And that's the approach that we've taken recently and spent less time than ever on social media, made more money than ever before, got better client results than everyone before. And if you look at like the highest performers in the world in business, you don't even know who they are because they are away from the public eye doing the things that actually matter. And that's what Mike's talking about here. Exactly. And it really, it's, it's something we've got to move away from is this whole idea that we've got to have followers. You only need a thousand true fans is the saying. You think about it, if you've got a business that you're charging $500 a month for someone to work with you, a thousand people, that's a seven figure company right there. Yeah. And it's a perfect lead into the next guest that we've, we've selected for this compilation. And that is John Goodman. And, you know, John Goodman, if you don't know who this guy is, I'd be quite surprised. <laughs> he's got the personal trainer development center. He's got personal, uh, personal trainer Ignite. Ignite the fire. Ignite the fire. Right. He's got some great books. He's written many, many things. And he is, he is like the godfather of personal training. I think we called the, the episode that we did with, with John. And, and he's very direct. He's very specific in terms of getting clear on what we actually need to do to start that business. This is why we've done it in this order. So Mike shared them pieces about the business. And now we're going to let John jump in and share his piece on getting things actually moving forward. Let's get into it. It all comes down to the basic principle of if you have a problem, you need to define the problem before you start to figure out the solution. I think we're so obsessed these days in 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 methods of transmission, you know, like what social media is best, what software is best, all of these questions that are idiotic questions because you haven't actually defined the problem yet. If you go back and define the problem, you're like, well, what are my two or big three, you know, biggest needs or what am I good at or what am I not good at? You, you, you do that hard work first and then you say, okay, what are my two biggest needs for software, for example? What are my two biggest needs for software, three biggest needs for software? Okay, well, the first software that I can find that fulfills these two or three biggest needs is the software that I'm going to choose and then I'm never paying attention to this problem again. Um, it's, it's just a matter of simplifying it. So, so this idea of definition with income really helped me at the time. It was, it was how much money do you need to make each month to make sure that you're looked after and your loved ones are looked after. Basically rent, food, and if you, if you have any dependents, then obviously looking after them. And if you have any like hobbies or something that you, that you can't miss. So when I first did it, mine was 2,600 bucks because I was a single guy who, you know, lived by himself in a one bedroom apartment. It was very low. Well, mine now with a son and a wife is like 5,000 bucks a month. So it will change. But once you know what that number is, you say, okay, how much money am I making right now doing what I would do even if I made no money doing this thing for the rest of my life? Maybe it's zero. Maybe there's some dollars there. Um, how much money am I making passively? Maybe it's zero. Maybe there's some dollars there. And then what you have left is you have a number that I call your freedom number. Everybody's is different. But once you have that number, it's like, okay, that's your goal. Everything you do now has to be focused on getting to that one singular goal. And you do the highest yield efforts you can possibly do to get to that. Ignore the passive income stuff. Ignore the multiple streams of income stuff for now. Simply because all of those things are great, but all of those things take a significant amount of upfront effort to do for a proposed reward later, you probably don't have the time, you probably don't have the space to really put you all into that stuff yet. And even if you do have the time and space, you probably don't know that you have the time and space, which means you don't have the creative mindset to be able to do it. So, so once you define it, you know, usually it's coaching. And that's why I'm so big on online coaching, because online coaching to me is that kind of bridge. It's that first step for a lot of trainers where, yeah, you're not necessarily scaling your time. Yeah, it's not passive. Yeah, it's still a service industry where you're trading your time for money. But now you're doing it on your own schedule, which means you can condense it. You can block it off. And so so if you know that you need to make four thousand dollars a month, then you say, OK, well, if I get 20 clients at 200 bucks a month, then I hit that freedom number. So now my only goal is 20 clients or $400 a month, then you need 10 clients or however you want to do the math. Um, then your only goal is to get to that. 
you do everything that you need to do to get those 10 or 20 clients. That might mean that you call up every single person you know, you pound the pavement. Um, it's definitely not that you post on social media every single day. You know, that, that stuff might come later. And then once you hit that freedom number, and the reason why it's called the freedom number is, is I've always said freedom is providing yourself the opportunity to fail. Because when you fail, when you know that you can fail, because you're looked after, because you have defined the problem and that you know how much money you need, then you know that you can, you know that you can take a risk. And when you know that you can take a risk, you're unstoppable. I think a lot of the time what we fear and, and we don't take action on things um, because we're too afraid of what we think other people are going to think of us. And that's actually what stops us. I think, I think that um, a lot of the time we make up excuses of why we can't do something and, and then our brain kind of makes us believe that those excuses are plausible. And, and one of the biggest excuses, like, like one of the reasons why you don't want to pound the pavement or reach out to your extended network, I mean, basically anybody who's has built any kind of a social media network of friends of people who they've known at one point in their life over a long period of time has every single lead built into their network that they'll ever need for their entire lifetime. I, I truly believe that. It's just a matter of reconnecting with those people. And, and reconnecting them um, not in a, not in a sales way, like actually caring about them, actually taking an interest in these people as people. And and that's, to be honest, like that's what we teach people. Like, like you don't need to buy anything that I ever do. Basically, all that I'm ever going to tell you is to get started. Your only job is to reach out to five people every single day and say hi to them. I mean, that's like, like if somebody says, oh, I've tried everything and I can't get clients. It's like, how many people have you spoken to today? Well, none, but I've done funnels and I posted on Facebook. It's like, how many people have you spoken today? If you haven't spoken to a single person, I don't care what you've done. It's completely irrelevant to me. And so, so I think that that's what comes first. You know, posting into the abyss, building all these funnels, pretending that you're working is nothing but an excuse because you don't actually want to do this stuff that's hard. You don't actually want to put yourself out there because when you put yourself out there, you might get rejected. Um, you might have people who you don't care about that say things that aren't favorable towards you, largely because they're jealous. But but that's hard to take. And so so you don't do it. So, so, you, so you post into the abyss on Facebook pretending that you're working, you know, and, and not to say that Posting on social media isn't important. I wrote an entire book on how to use social media, but it's it, it's definitely not what you need to start with to make that transition. Um, you know, there are more important things, and those more important things are leveraging existing relationships that exist in your life, even loose relationships that exist in your life, and showing people that you legitimately care. Like I had somebody – who I'm connected to on Facebook, who I haven't spoken to since university, which was uh, 11 years ago. We're connected on Facebook. I haven't even seen his name pop up in as long as I can remember. But for some reason, Facebook decided that I would be interested in him, you know, a couple days ago. And he just got back from France and he finished a culinary degree and just opened up a restaurant. And it's his dream. I think he actually opened up a restaurant in France. I sent him a message and congratulated him on his restaurant and talked about, you know, I'm sure that like you're so excited about this and this is your dream come true and I'm so happy for you. Like, who knows if that will turn into anything ever, but A, it's just a nice thing to do because this person is obviously, you know, a little bit scared about what they're doing and, and this is their dream come true and, and if you ever do something where your dream's coming true and but you're also scared about it, wouldn't you love that somebody from your life comes up and basically says, attaboy, that's awesome and truly mean it? But in addition, this person, um, because of the Facebook algorithm, basically if you have a message with somebody, you're going to see them in your feed for a while. So this person is now one more person who's aware of what I do as a result of that. I've given them... I, I've become like their biggest fan. Like I've jumped in when they felt uh, probably at a reasonably low point in terms of their self-confidence and given them some of that self-confidence, which means I've jumped in and, 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 and given them what they needed when they needed it. And who knows? That's another node on my network. This person might know somebody who knows somebody who's thinking about becoming a personal trainer and my book might get recommended now or maybe not. But, but that's how the world works is based on loose connections. And the more high quality loose connections you can make, the better chance you're going to get at becoming lucky. And really success is nothing 
but luck and you can increase your chances of catching a lucky break. You can increase your chances of serendipity and it all comes down to these weak ties that you have. So you just heard from John there and John really spoke about some things that are close to my own beliefs and philosophies. One of the big ones is actually understanding what marketing is and people get caught up thinking it's the social media platform, it's the software they use for their email automation and that's not what marketing is. They're just the tools that allow you to do things. You must, must, must understand what the problem is in your audience that common problem, that, that bleeding neck problem, and identify that. And then you start to find out where those people are hanging out, what platforms they're on. It's not the other way around. And again, it's something that we spoke about multiple times in this show, but it keeps coming up. People wanting to build websites, people are wanting to get click funnels and all this fancy software. When in reality, that's so much further down the line. That's like chapter 52 of the book. And we need to start off at chapter one and build a business sequentially. And that's what John's speaking about here. Yeah, and you know we're big fans of the whole freedom figure piece where he talked about you know get to that specific amount, and th this is this is what we literally did. Like when we started our business, we're like, right, what do we actually fucking need to live? Get that kind of money in, and we've not we've pretty much not paid ourselves any more than that. Yeah, we've kind of like leveraged the company to travel and go to events and do awesome stuff that we love to do, but obviously all them things end up benefiting the business anyway. So um, getting to that freedom figure has allowed us to take huge risks. Like uh, just kind of part of our journey is, has allowed us to invest tons of cash in, in setting up you know, more efficient company structures for the, for the more uh, kind of legitimate way to say that. <laughs> and then you know, spending an awful lot of money on Facebook ads. Like if you want to really scale your business, then Facebook ads will be a platform you'll use. But getting to that point first should be your absolute most priority. Um, we so often, and we definitely did this in the start, was we got started and then started adding in loads of different layers. Oh, we're going to add the membership site and we're going to add this course and then the coaching, then this offer, then this, then this option. And it gets very confusing. And it's confusing for us, confusing for our customers, which we'll talk about later. And it kind of defers us away. Like we don't actually build the income that we need. And, uh, and that just causes a lot of stress. Yeah, it's really interesting actually. We, we've realized, because we're running a company of a decent-ish decent, decent -ish scale now. And like you said, we still draw the same money as a salary each month for us. And yeah, we do things through the company that allow more leverage, but you'll be shocked at how little money you actually need when you really start to strip things yeah. back. I think we're caught up in this whole mindset, oh, I've got to be making five grand a month to survive and like our business is doing over 10x that but we personally draw a very very small amount of cash from the business because we've streamlined our lifestyles prioritized putting money back into the business with mentorship with events with facebook ads and because of that we've delayed that gratification and the business has grown dramatically i used to get more out of more out of my lifestyle than i did before when i had more money i was just you didn't have the certainty, that's why. Yeah, that's true, that's true. You literally just took every penny that you had. So you like, have a 10 grand windfall and you take all the money, you're like, oh, I'm yeah, rich. Yeah. And then you blow it all because you don't actually understand certainty. Exactly. But business is actually there to create certainty. That's why you're building a business. Mm, damn right. Damn right. Love that shit. Mm. Sweet. And, and uh, I've got this quote here. I mean, the freedom is having the opportunity to fail. I mean, it's all tied into what we just said. Such a great quote. And uh, the final piece that, that John touched on there with... All the leads you'll ever need are already in your network. You know, we're all so concerned about needing to generate more leads. But if you're not at that figure yet, then like, you know, what's the most important thing we need to do? Get out and solve the problem. Yeah. Prospect. Yeah. What are we doing with our clients right now inside the OSA? Plug. <laughs> Where do they make their first sales? But honestly, we've got guys in, in our 12-week in our mentorship program, the Online Startup Academy, where they're coming from no online experience at all and they're making five to ten grand of sales in the first what two to four weeks yeah. without running one single ad no ads no ads no aimless posting all that shit yeah it's a bit of graft definitely a bit of graft yeah a lot of graft <laughs> but it's it's getting them started it's getting them to that point where they can make them decisions and have the opportunity to fail if they needed to yeah you gotta understand the difference between hunting and farming when it comes to building your business. And again, it's this sequential order piece that we keep speaking about. When you're starting out your business, as John says, your leads are already there. You just need to go and hunt them down and have the right bait, which is a message or 
an application, whatever it might be, a challenge, it could be multiple things, but have the right bait to bring them into your network and then you can start farming the profits from that person. But so many people try and do this the way around where they just try and run traffic from day one and just post it on all these different platforms and hope people come to them. It's like, no, go to where your audience already is and be actively engaging with them. Like you have to outreach to people. And we're so scared of that. So like, I don't want to outreach to people. I don't want to offend them. I don't want to hurt them. It's like, you're giving them a free training. Like, where's any hurt in that? The only hurt is your ego when they say no. It's like, it doesn't matter. Move on to the next one. Just yeah. look at the numbers. Yeah. That's literally it. And it's just, just the conversation. You're like one conversation away from taking your business to the next level. Or maybe a hundred conversations, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, one leads to the next. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And... You know, we started touching on there, like we are adding lots of bits to the programs and uh, I think that's super cool kind of intro into Des. Des the Braver, the girl who takes lots of pictures of herself <laughs> all the time and then she slates people who slate her for doing that. <laughs> so Des is a, a branding expert, that's what she does. I'm not sure if I've used the right term there. She probably doesn't like, even like being called an expert. But Des is absolutely huge on creating a brand. and I think that's something that we've spent a decent whack of time on. And that was maybe one of the... She really helped us. She did, didn't she? Yeah, when you were in Thailand and, and we, you met Des for the first time, we came back and fucking, this is when we launched the podcast. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. The remote revolution, we came up with the term remote revolution then. Yeah, I remember yeah. I went back to the UK and I wrote my whiteboard, I was like remote, and I started just like coming up with words all around it. And it was remote fit pro, remote revolution, like all this stuff started to Yeah, yeah, me. we used to, uh, that, up to that point, we were still called fit pro funnels, right? Yeah. Oh, we were? Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, this is a really interesting one. Des, Des really set the ball in motion for remote fit pro as it is today and continues to grow. So she actually talks about being specific in solving problems. That's what it's all about, using your program. And George touched on this earlier with a bit of commentary saying you try and add like 50 programs to your offering, your ecosystem, because that's what everyone else seems to be doing. Well, firstly, are those people successful? Do you actually know they're successful? Not what their Instagram's telling you. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the ones who are actually successful, what did they start doing? Like that's the key. How do businesses start and then how do they grow? You can't, again, chapter 200 of the book, you can't implement that when you're starting out. Yeah, I'm right. Let's listen to Des. See you on the flip side. One of the things that really stands out for me is a lot of clients. Um, I work with tw two types of people. One are very established business owners who are just looking to take it to the other level. And then we have the people who have a business but are stuck. So they're in the beginning stages. So those people, they come to me and they say, oh my God, I really want to offer a high ticket package, but what should I include? So they put everything in there and they always feel like to increase the price, you need to keep adding and adding and give, give your soul, like put to the devil, you know, sell your organs or whatever. And no, that's really not true because the truth is, I, I have a paid community, right? And when I started it, I felt this exact same way. I was charging $10 per month for that community when I started. And I was giving them 20 things to take advantage of. And what ended up happening is people were so overwhelmed, they decided not to join, even though it was $10 a month, because it was too many things. So that's one of the mindset shifts that really needs to start happening more often in people who are just beginning. You don't need to throw more stuff into the mix. People actually pay more for only a few things if you're very, very clear about the benefits, not the features, the benefits of what they're going to get. So that's definitely the number one thing. I have a friend, right? And he does visual branding websites mostly. And he was trying to sell himself as doing everything. So what I do and plus the websites, right? So a whole agency, but he was not promoting himself as an agency, just one person. So when people see that, they think, oh, you know, he doesn't specialize in either. So that's where our minds go. As soon as we see a person trying to do a couple of things, even if it's all under the umbrella of branding, we go, oh, I prefer to pay more money to someone who specializes in a website, specializes in internal branding because they know their stuff, even though there's, sometimes it's not even the case. So from a psychological standpoint, that's why brands try to make things so simple. I've personally been responsible for that decision a few years ago when I was working with a brand selling, uh, uh, what was it? Candles. I'm saying candles. They had a thousand types of candles and people were very confused because they had too much of a choice. When you give people too big of a choice, they cannot choose. That's why that's why when you go to any shop in America, you have twelve point five different types of ketchup and people just stare at 
the whole line like zombies and spend half an hour there. It's a nightmare. Don't do that with your brand, please. I had four membership levels to my community when I started. Now I have two, maybe even just one when I launch it next time. I can give you a perfect example with my business because right now I'm in the process of massively scaling it and we have had to let go of a lot of stuff over the last month. My team literally fired me from those decisions. They said, no, listen, you just, you cannot keep creating products. You just can't. And I sat down and I realized, yeah, this is confusing the hell out of my audience, right? They buy all the stuff and I make great money. But if we, if we narrow it down to the one thing, the one signature program that I know is going to make the biggest difference from the, for them, that's going to be the best move. So what I did was when you go to my website two weeks from now when it's done, uh, you're going to see that I have all of the levels very, very clear. You can join my community you can have a done for your service or a done with your service. And then there's the course. So yes, it's multiple products, but it's different levels uh, and different uh, investment, right? So what I do is depending on my target audience, cause I told you guys, I have two for the first one, the established business owners is the done for your services for the um, people who are in the beginning stages of their business. It's the branding and social media course. Right, because that course covers everything they need to know to get to the point where they can then come and work with me because they can afford it. So I made it very simple. I'm going to do a webinar selling the course. I do live videos and it all leads people to the same place. So how do you choose the product? Well, I asked. First of all, I do a lot of, um, a lot of polls and surveys for my audience and I feel like that's so underestimated. People just don't do it. Now listen, there's... Two ways to do that. Number one, you sound like a desperate asshole being like, guys, I don't know what to do. My business is not working out. So tell me what I need to sell to you. What would you pay for? And you're laughing, but I see that all the time. Every single day I see people doing that. The other way is to understand positioning at least a little bit and make it seem like, hey guys, you know, so I'm thinking about you. How can I help you even better? What products would you like me to create or keep? Boom. So when I asked that in my group, everybody wanted me to keep the branding course. There were tons of people saying, yeah, I'm almost there. I can almost afford it now. Please don't remove it. There were people buying it just because they saw it on the poll. <laughs> Literally, when you remind your audience, they take action. So please don't forget to ask. You're not creating these products for yourself. You're creating them for other people. So it's not what you want. It's what they want. There are three steps I personally identify when it comes to positioning yourself as an expert, right? Positioning yourself as that voice of your marketplace. Cause that's what everybody wants really. The first one is building the emotional connection. So a lot of people skip this step because they think, oh, my story is not important. You know, people have heard enough of those. They're all the same. My audience is tired of it. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, you don't know that. And making assumptions on behalf of your audience is not a good thing to do. It's the same thing when you get on a sales call with someone and you decide they cannot afford you. So you either don't pitch or you, you lowball yourself. It's exactly the same thing. You're making an assumption, an uneducated assumption too, as the worst one. So yes, stories are important. And there's a lot of um, psychological experiments. There's a lot of data on the fact that stories actually sell that when a person is, um, has two brands with the exact same two products in front of him, so let's say it's two coaches, right? For example, fitness coaches, business coaches, doesn't matter. One of these people he's already familiar with because he knows his story. The other person, someone completely new, same price, same product. They will 85% of the time go with a the person they're familiar with. It's called the familiarity principle. Um, stories predate language, if you think about it. They literally, we've been telling stories since before we had a cohesive way to communicate with each other via words. So don't ever underestimate the emotional connection. The best way right now in 2018, I mean, two years from now, 80% of the content will be videos. So if you're not live streaming right now, it's most likely a problem because I bet that your competition is. Um, so that's one of the best ways because people are able to see your gestures. They're able to see how you reply to their questions. Do you get rattled? Do you get embarrassed? You know, so that's very important to them. When you hide behind social media posts, even if it's your face there, it's not the same thing. There's one thing that I call strategic vulnerability. 
So this is when, yes, it's very important for you to be vulnerable, but it doesn't mean you should <laughs> you should go on live video and splash your entire life. Like, oh, my husband broke up with me. I, I had a one night standing up pregnant. Like <laughs> nobody gives a shit. Like don't do that. Strategic vulnerability means <laughs> you cannot show vulnerability before you've shown competence. That's the way for you to think about it. So that really helps because you know, oh, if these people haven't heard anything valuable from me and I just go and open myself up, they're going to see me as this great storyteller, but they're not necessarily going to follow me because of my business tips, fitness tips, whatever. So that's the most important thing. Uh, and then storytelling is a very interesting aspect of business. A lot of people think storytelling is writing a post, being like, once upon a time, I decided to become a fitness instructor. And then it was all unicorns and butterflies. And my clients have great results. Here's three testimonials. <laughs> That's not storytelling. Storytelling permeates your entire business. It needs to be everywhere. So if you decide to adopt that, and my recommendation is that you do, it needs to be on your website, all of your social media presence, your visuals need to also consistently tell a story, right? So this is all part of building the emotional connection. Once you're done with that stage, the second stage of positioning yourself as an expert is building trust. So the way you build trust, this is where you share a lot of value with your audience. But here's the key, specific value. What most people do if you go on your Facebook feed and scroll down for 38 minutes, you're going to see a lot of generic advice. You're going to see stuff like consistency is the key to success. Now go ahead and be successful. You know, oh, you want to lose weight? Stop eating. You know, it's like this, this bullshit, this regurgitated advice that is not even true most of the time. And people really think they're sharing value when they do that. So what I do, my strategy twice a month or three times if I have the time, I go really deep into an aspect of branding. Just the other day, I published a post on um, lifestyle branding. What do you do to build a lifestyle brand and what are the myths around it? That post, I think it had at least... 3,000 right. words. It was massive, right? And I, it continued on my business page too. So I go deep. I talk about the psychology, the neuroscience behind branding. I go really deep into data, into studies, experiments. And when people see that, they think, wow, she spent so much time. She really cares about us. And then they start tagging you when someone asks for a recommendation. And that's when you know your content is working. You build authority through one thing and one thing mostly, which is sharing case studies and testimonials, going live on video and telling people the story of how you helped this client, share your screen, get Ecamm or Manicamp. They're great for live streaming. If you have MacBook or windows and you can share slides, you can share your screen. You can go through the entire case study, or you can invite the person there and do it together. Those are the kinds of things people know they should be doing, but they never take the time. It's so bad. Another thing that works really well is cross-promotion. Again, something so simple, and I tell all my clients to do that. We make an entire plan, and next time they come, they're like, so Des, I didn't have the time. <laughs> so really, I know. I know it takes time, but remember, there's a few people in your industry that you definitely want to be collaborating with. These are people that if you brand yourself by association with them, it's going to massively elevate your brand, your business, and open the doors to an entire new audience for you. So don't hesitate. Um, prioritize it. So those are the three stages that it takes to position yourself as an expert. And it's your responsibility to know which stage the majority of your audience is going through at any point of time. Because audience, uh, obviously, obviously, you keep expanding, you keep expanding your audience. So let's say you've added a, a thousand new people in the month of August. Well, that means that all of them are stuck on the first stage because they don't know anything else, right? So that means keep sharing most of the stories, hit a break with the other two, maybe ten percent, ten percent, eighty percent. So I look at it in terms of percentage always because I have a specific system. But I hope this is helpful. We're on the flip side. We're here. That was great. It was a great little input from, from Des and she always makes it very clear. I think she's great at articulating the, the idea that we too often make things more complicated and actually that's a hindrance. We're trying to do a good thing for sure. Our intention is great, but the truth is we need to listen to what Des is saying there and, and, and simplify our things that we're trying to build 
What should what what happens when you have too many options, James? You give someone too many options. Well, it's like your laptop when, especially my laptop, because it's the crappiest thing on earth. The new MacBook Pros, by the way, if you've not bought one and you're thinking about getting one, what should they do, George? They should get one, just not yours. Are you sold on these? <laughs> it's just yours that doesn't work, I'm pretty sure. Well, Other people have got functioning laptops. Oh, well, anyway, my MacBook Pro doesn't work and it's the new one, so I'm very angry with Apple. I'm done with Apple. George, on the other hand, is sold. I'm sold. We'll get it. I'm in. Anyway, branding. We're talking about branding. How, how, how relevant is that? Anyway, back to the point at hand. What happens when people have too many options? Got it. So what I was saying around laptops is, I do this all the time, I open like 17 things on my laptop and then suddenly it starts freezing. This always happens when I'm on like a sales call and like something else is running in the background and I forgot it and my laptop just sort of like just freezes and doesn't, doesn't do a thing. But it overwhelms the system and it's the same with the human brain. You can only, only actually do one thing at once. Only do one thing at once, like focus on that one thing at once. So you can do multiple things but to actually focus your attention onto one thing is all you can do. So singularity of focus is everything. And then that needs to be directed by yourself and your offerings. So you can't confuse people by doing 50 different things. And people make this mistake all the time. They're like, should I have a downsell here, then an upsell here, and this here, and this here? It's like, you're now giving people so many options to choose from, it's overwhelming them. If you just have one thing, and that one thing is the best thing at solving the one specific problem, there doesn't need to be a separate thing. Because that's all there is to solve the problem. It's, the decision is made for them. It's either yes or no, it's binary. We're not ending up with this decision where there's 50 options out there and it just becomes overwhelm and they're just so confused and don't do anything. Mm. And I, I think I wanted to share how Des was saying how when she's been scaling her business, she's let go of things. And this is what, exactly what we did. We've let go of a lot of stuff and focused on one specific thing after doing lots of research. We did lots of research. We did lots of research and Des talks about lots of research. But before we even get into that, I want to talk about letting go. It's not just letting go of the physical things, it's the belief that you hold. Mm. This is a big one. People aren't going to, the biggest one for everyone, and we've gone through this ourselves recently, people aren't willing to spend, you know, 500 pounds a month for a transformation program. It's like, that's ludicrous. Like, it's, it's crazy. You just need to start putting yourself around income higher people. income people you if you want to earn more money. Oh, yeah. Why are you smiling? Uh, because we've got Vince coming on next. Oh, <laughs> oh, Vince is Vince is good. Vince Vince changed the game for me in terms of seeing him with Craig and Bedros, like some big names in the industry, and seeing how they act and hold themselves made me very aware of like what else there is. And it's it's like we talked about this. We talk about this a lot in our program with psycho cybernetics and being the person that you want to become now. So if you want to be someone who let's say has a nice watch or travels first class you need to start hanging around with those people or experiencing those things now so you know what it feels like and it becomes the new norm yeah anyway we're getting really distracted here <laughs> but yeah like kind of letting go of things i like i like that i like that we need to get let go of the belief but in terms of letting go of things in your program like i suppose i th I, I would definitely say let go in the letting go of the belief first for us was huge and the results in our business just spoke for themselves like we focused on creating a, a much more beneficial offer for everyone uh, that we were selling to. And we literally hit the, like the revenue we did last year has pretty much been hit this year already. Mm. Just like simply from, you know, we quadrupled the business last year. We set to more than do that this year by doing less things. Yeah. You've got to remember people willingly pay more for the perfect offer than pay less for something that isn't a good decision. Yep. That's so true. That happens with our investments. When we've looked at who we've invested at recently, we've paid considerably more because it was a perfect match. So find the perfect match. Don't try and get into the price battle of mm -hmm. saying, oh, but it's cheaper, so therefore it's better. It's like, no, people want a result at the end of the day. Yep. And it really doesn't matter. It's like if it's something that is a big enough pain for them, it's, it's like 10 out of 10 on the pain scale and it's urgent and it's complex and they can't solve it which a lot of these people can't, that's why so many people fail at diets and everything else, then they'll pay big money if your message is bang on. So mm. get really clear on that. And we're about to get Vincent to talk about becoming a specialist. Just before I do, there's one more point that I wanted to hammer home from Des there, which was, and I think it really leads into becoming a specialist. The, the only way you really become a specialist is by doing the research, asking people what they really want. You know, listen to Des's advice and, and not being desperate about asking them questions, but 
asking it from a place of, you know, you knowing more than that person, all right? Again, Vince is going to jump into all this. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's going to cover a lot of these points. So I'll, I'll not talk too much, but do the research 100%. Speak to your audience, speak to them people so that you can really understand the problem that needs solving and move into that area as quickly as you can. So Vince is an awesome guy. Vince is an awesome guy. So I've been very fortunate to spend a decent chunk of time with Vince, stayed with him in an incredible mansion in, in Miami, and then went over to his event in Clearwater in Florida as well. And the thing about Vince is he's been around the fitness industry for a long time. He's been there for like 10 plus years. Started off in the whole ebook boom when everyone was selling low price ebooks. That's where he made his, his name and his money. And now he actually sells the complete, obviously he sells high ticket coaching. He doesn't believe in people selling ebooks and low end products anymore because of markets have changed, ads yeah. are more expensive. And he's a very honest, honest guy. And he's a coach's coach. That's what I really enjoy about Vince. He believes in coaching, he believes in people. So he invests heavily in his own coaching. I've had many conversations with him about his investments and what he's doing. And he really does care for, for his people. But that all, all sort of stems, like we were just saying about the high ticket thing, about becoming an expert and becoming great at solving one problem for one person. And in this episode you're about to hear, he talks about the skinny guys. That was his niche, as he would say. Niche is what we would say. So let's get into Vince and, and hear what he has to say. I really just kind of doubled down on one person. That person was me. I, I uh, just told the skinny Vinny story and, uh, you know, my programming is good, but you know, like nobody's programming is rocket science. Nobody's nutrition programming is rocket science. I mean, we're all teaching the same stuff. Uh, but what I realized is that I wasn't selling a service. I was selling myself and I just sold myself. I sold my story and it was a believable story. It was a story that other skinny guys I could buy into. And uh, I really just doubled down on the beginner skinny guy market who never had their first transformation. And I know we're going to talk about business today, but that's your first lesson. You can't be all things to all people. You know, I didn't talk about fat loss. I didn't market to women. I didn't do body weight stuff. I didn't do powerlifting. I didn't do IIFYM. I didn't do keto. It was just, it was simple, no nonsense muscle building. All right. And that was my brand. And I ran with that. I haven't looked back. I've been running with the same, with the same beliefs for over, over 10 years now. So uh, that's one of the big things. If you're going to start an online business, you need to become a specialist. And, uh, and there needs to be a real story uh, from uh, when you first started so people can relate and say, yeah, he was just like me. I've got the pictures. I got the painful stories. And uh, that was the beginning of launching uh, – an entire series of muscle building products to come because what was interesting was that that first product, you know, I ran with that for three years. All right. And when you have one product, it's called your flagship product. People come along for the journey. And then, uh, what, what do they say when they're done the program? If you take good care of them and you deliver results, what's next? Vinny? What's next? Yeah. What's, and that was the brand. What I built a brand, I, I built a seven figure online fitness business around two words. What's next? And every product I came out with was essentially uh, my next transformation. So I don't know if we're recording, if people watching this can see the videos, but you can see the products up here. There's Maximizer Muscle, uh, there's uh, Live at Large TV, there's Stay Shredded Status, Hypertrophy Max, and every one of those products represents a different transformation with a different goal. And that was the core of my business model, Evolve transform and people will come on the journey with you. And as long as you're evolving, you know, if you're getting bigger, if you're getting leaner, if you're getting stronger, people want what you have. And this all comes down to a core belief I have. If you want to achieve something in life, you need to find a trusted mentor who has what you have in excess. All right. So a lot of people look at Vince and like, hey, how's this guy have a big seven figure online fitness business? He's not even that big. Yeah, I know. But the guys that are following my stuff aren't as big as me. And I figured that out early on. You can't market to everybody, but I realized I was a little further ahead than guys who wanted the, the build I had, the lifestyle I had. And I spoke to those guys. And, uh, you know, the bigger guys would be like, how does this guy give muscle building advice? He's still weak. I'm not marketing to you, man. <laughs> it's cool. I have your attention, though. So you have to understand that money follows attention. And there are channels like YouTube 
and Instagram and Facebook that are all based on three words, pay to play. All right. You got to pay for attention, man. And there's a lot of things that do work and you have to figure out what they are. Uh, if you try and post something on Facebook years ago, you know, a normal video I put on YouTube, um, sorry, on Facebook, you get like 10, 15,000 views in the first 24 hours. I post it now, it gets 300 views. I got a million followers. People think the followers are fake. And there's Facebook just throttles the traffic. So they have limited inventory space on their feed and what they show. And because Facebook has people that they have to uh, pay, right? They're a big company. They only can show the people that are are the most relevant to their audience. So you're competing with people that are spending money to get shown. So organic is dead. You can't just post good content anymore. You have to put money behind it. All right. And this all people are like, but I don't have any money. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with money. This has to do with belief and courage. Because if you believe your stuff is really good, you have to trust that when people see it, they'll invest into your services. It's just the name of the game. Your pro your competition has the same problems as you. So you have to start coming up with a strategy and the strategy that works really well for us is social proof uh, that will never go away. Hearing other people's real life stories in a non hypey way and hearing them contribute you contribute your program or you as their coach as their success as the link as their guide is the number one thing you have to build your business around helping others. Right there, them, them points, them final points, them closing words from Vince are really, <laughs> really what it's all about, being around the right people. You know, all the points he's making here are, are, are absolutely spot on, and uh, we want to say this to the end because these last closing words really hammer home like the truth, the absolute truth behind it, and that is to do with your own belief, right? People, you know, bang on about mindset all the time, bang on about... Oh, woo-woo this mindset, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is what you believe is what you create. So we have to change that first. We have to intercept, as uh, Mr. Sam Oven says, we have to intercept it at that level. The belief level is where we make the most difference in our results. Mm. So actually, like I was saying before we jumped into Vince's clip, when I went to Florida, I came, I went there with a very limited mindset. Like George and I's mindset still today is incredibly limited. Like incredibly, like, man, even when you start, when you do your first like 10K month, you think like you're an absolute God, don't you? Yeah. You're like, oh my God, I've, I've, I've made it. It was your goal. It was your original goal and you achieved it, right? Yeah, but you hang on to that for so long. Go, yeah. And this is a mistake that I think people make because it's like seen to be the holy, like, yeah. you are successful, you have accomplished everything and then people get stuck at the 10K a month mindset. And, and they drop, they drop down. They like drop, you, yeah. you, you don't stay at the 10K a month because you limit, you, you're like, that's your goal still. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're not growing, you're dying as Tony Robbins says, so you eventually contract. So it's a, it's a really toxic place to be, like the six figure thing. Like you need to think bigger than that, but you have to think bigger than that. You can't have really a six figure business. You can have a six figure solopreneur hustle thing, but six figure business, that's like, you need more. You can be, you can be a self-employed or freelancer making, you know, one, two hundred grand a, a year for sure. You might have a couple of people working for you like as, as, uh, as freelancers. But it's, it's not going to be something like like Mike said at the very start. It's not going to be a business. Nope. So back to the point with Vince. When I went there, very limited mindset. When I spent time around Vince, Joel, Bedros, Craig, I left and I was like, man, we're playing so small in this game. We need, to, we need to step up. And another episode we have in our show, and go and listen to it if you haven't already, but Daniel Priestley, he talks about environment dictating performance. And it's so true. And we always, the famous quote is the Jim Rohn one, the average of the five people. But when you actually spend time in that environment where you see people at a higher level, you realize they are literally the same as you. They just have different beliefs about themselves. Yeah. And one of my favorite quotes from the book Psycho Cybernetics, which you just referenced, is human beings always act and feel and perform in accordance with what they imagine to be true about themselves and their environment. And you cannot escape that fact. That's why every single morning now, like George, I, our team, our clients inside the Online Startup Academy, 
they read their vision of who they want to become. And it's not just like a one sentence thing. This is a big freaking document. It takes like 15 minutes to read through. First thing in the morning, first thing before, uh, last thing before you go to bed, every single day. And I think for me, that's been one of the most powerful documents I've ever created. I can honestly say that. Yep. I've got that quote in there right there as well from the book. I read that every day. <laughs> good, good, good. Absolutely point. love it. And you know what you were saying there, James, like we don't, we don't realize this. If you if you think that we're chatting shit, saying that you are the five people, the products of the five people you spend the most time with, if you think we're lying, right? You need to go and do it. You need to go and surround yourself with higher level people. Then you will realize that is only the point when you will realize that, holy shit, this is true. Yeah. If, if you are unhappy with where you are right now and you feel stuck, get your credit card out, put some money onto it to go to an event and physically be around these people. Not just an event where there's like 10,000 people in the room, an intimate event where you get to speak and be around these people and see how they act. And you will suddenly change very, 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 very quickly because mm. it removes the belief thing. Like, of, can I actually do this? Because you're physically seeing it. Because that's how I see it with belief. There's like, you can have the internal belief where you can sit, you can meditate, you can visualize, and you can make that happen. Or what I think is much more powerful is actually going to see it in the reality, in this material world. Because when you see it in the material world, I feel it like it makes it more real. Yeah. It's like the whole thing we, a lot of people always come back to the idea that we, oh, I have to see it to believe it. Well, go see it. Yeah, go find go find that shit. And I, I think I've talked about in an interview that, that I I got interviewed on, where I was saying like we have to seek out the environment we want to be, and we have to seek out these people that have done what we want to do. And 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 I mean, Vince summed it up per- perfectly. It's people that have what you want in excess. Yep. Oh, I love that quote. In excess. They have what you want in excess, abundance of it. And it's, this literally always comes back to this, right? It's always your, your abundance, like the level of abundance that you think to. Like truly abundance is like absolutely infinite. But we always think of it in stages. Like ultimately our belief grows around abundance in, in, in levels because we're like, oh, right now, oh yeah, sure, we can, we can make 10 million a year. But do we really, really believe that we can make a billion dollars a year? I mean, it's definitely a possibility. I don't. I couldn't rule it out. But how we get there right now is is who knows. Yeah, I wish I could remember the quote I came up recently on a Facebook post. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to self quote that, but I can't remember what it was. But it was around the idea of like, it's what Steve Jobs says about the, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. You have to trust that your dots are going to connect in the future somehow. So I had a spin off of that, and people are trying to put the how before the why, and it doesn't work that way. Like you've got to be able to see the why of what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish and the how will reveal itself and you have to have faith in that process mm. in doing so. But so many people get that the wrong way around and it's like how, 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 how. And it's not just going to turn up at your doorstep. You Like you say, George, you've got to go and hunt that down. Yeah. And people are people are wanting, and I think this is the culture today of we're, we're brought up in such a comfortable environment where everything is, we have true abundance of food, of ultimately health and wealth this is all about like we've got roofs over our head we don't really know what hardship is and that means we haven't actually had to go out and make shit happen and that's what i think is a huge problem in today's world is we expect everything to come to our plate like how many people join our program and they expect instantly to just be like fed leads into a funnel yeah, it's yeah. like it's like no no no. you're gonna go and hustle first yeah. so you can feel what that's like because you need to know 100 percent, 100 percent, and if you have been listening to this show for a while and you've not yet noticed like, or you've not taken action on what all these guests say, like there's Ben Coomer came to mind then, you know, he talks about how we, you know, business doesn't get handed to us on a plate. We've got to go get it. We've got to go take it. Right. Everybody is saying these same things on this podcast. So, and, and we, we, I would say we've, we've actioned most of it. All right. We're not perfect. We've not actioned everything that we've, we've heard on this podcast, <laughs> but we've actioned a lot of stuff. And if you are listening to this and you have not actioned stuff and you're listening to this right now, I want to, I want to ask you, I want to give you the opportunity to, to make a difference, make a change right now. Whilst you're listening to the podcast, you can send us an email right now at info at remotefitpro.com with a subject line. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Thank you. <laughs> Where's that from? That's from Profit First, right? It's from Mike Michalowicz, yeah. yeah. So send us with a subject line. I'm drawing a line in the sand. And tell us what you're going to do differently. Tell us what you're going to make a change in for your business, for your mindset. Ultimately, the biggest thing we were interested in is, is what you're going to do differently 
in your day to day, not what offer you're going to start putting out to people. I want to know what events you're going to plan to go to, what programs you're going to see if you can join, what people you're going to go surround yourself with. Let's let's hear it. I'm drawing a line in the sand. <laughs> that was loud. That was really loud, man. <laughs> it's, not, it's a rented couch. Well, actually, like it sort of goes. It's in keeping with what's happened today. Getting into this bloody apartment. <laughs> what happened, George? Well, we couldn't get in earlier. We uh, <clears throat> we had a bit of a funky lock. It wasn't functioning properly when we first arrived. But we managed to get in. We managed to get in last night. Half pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got in last night. Yeah, moved the way. I think it just opened magically. But did we even lock it? <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't lock it. But today we come back, middle of the day, after going to a subway that was shut down. We yeah. ended up getting a takeaway instead. And uh, <clears throat> the door would not open, so we, we, we called the guy, the owner, and he, came, he comes around and <laughs> he couldn't open the door. He could not get the lock to move. And we told him what we thought was up. And he was like, booting the door. He was <laughs> literally, good. he was ready to smash it off his hinges. Steaming into this door. Yeah, he spent like 20 minutes like slamming into the door. It wouldn't even budge. It would not even budge without completely destroying the door. And uh, eventually it just opened, right? It just popped. No, he got his knife out and absolutely destroyed all yeah. around the lock. Oh, yeah, shit, it did, yeah. But now he's fixed. We've got a new lock, thank God. But that was funny. Yeah experience <laughs> crazy things i actually thought that yesterday i just to sort of touch on this and, and wrap this up the it really hit me yesterday like how amazing things can be when you dedicate your energy and focus over a prolonged period of time because mm. people don't people want to cash out early yeah people want to cash out they want all the they want all the riches and the glamour and all the great stuff and by all means you can do that but that's a really limited way of thinking the, the key is being able to delay gratification time and time and time again like i think we've been pretty good with that george we've delayed gratification like mad and even yesterday we were looking at getting you know we went to the hockey game last minute the tickets were not cheap by any means <laughs> but we were able to to buy them because we delayed all those little things that we wanted months and months ago and the reality is it's not even made a dent in the bank account and they were pretty expensive tickets <laughs> <laughs> very expensive <laughs> Far more expensive than we expected as well. Yeah. But it's the, it's the point is, it's the experience to be able to delay and then eventually when you have the opportunity, to, you can just say yes to things. You don't have to keep saying no to things all the time. Because mm. I've, I've been in that position, I'm sure you have, where it's like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, right? We hear so often that you, you even hear from people that have been super successful and they've got more money so that they, they never have to say no to anything. But they're miserable. Because they've, they've lost their sense of purpose. So it's, it's like the whole coming back to the stoic philosophy stuff. And we've, we've really rambled on this episode. Like This has really gone off on a massive tangent. And I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> we've got a steak dinner to go to in 40 minutes. Yeah. Like. <laughs> we, um, the, the stoic philosophy is like, you know, we have to have that purpose. That must overrule the need for the money. The, the, you know, the need for all that kind of stuff and that comfortability. Like everybody can be comfortable. Everybody can find a way to be cozy, to be comfortable, but not everybody can have a purpose. Not everybody can make a difference. Not everybody can really um, live a live a life, and that's that's I believe what we're what we're all about. What we're calling people forward. That's what we're calling you forward. Join a line in the sand. Drop me that email, mm. and uh, that's that's what this is all about, really. Because like I was trying to someone the other day, I was like, I really don't give a shit how much we're working for one i know it's temporary but for two like it's fucking fun man every single day like even if i'm doing 12 hours like people around me like fucking hell mate you're working a lot i'm like yeah but i'm having a fucking great time <laughs> doing it <laughs> like someone else with that on the i had a call today with someone who wanted to come on board our program and he asked me like, how much do you work and i was like hmm, 12 12 14 hours most days like 90 percent of the, the time like rarely take a day off <laughs> And like, but I was explaining to him, I was like, look, dude, we're looking to build a nine figure company here. You're just wanting to make 10 grand a month and look after your family. They're two very opposing goals. One's not better than the other, but it's reflective to what you have to do to make it happen. Mm, yeah. It's like, do you just want to be fit and healthy or do you want to be Matt Fraser? Like, what do you want to be? They're two very opposing goals. It yeah. doesn't mean that you're better, but it's just know what you want. I mean, we probably work less when we're making six figures. 
Oh, mate, 100% we work less. Oh, life, life was good, man. Well, it's still good now. It's great, like I was saying, but we work a lot more. But it's, it's, it's the greater purpose. It's the greater, you know, you've, you're, you've been able to level up the work that you do, which is the most exciting thing for me as, a, as an individual anyway. Oh, man, I'm so excited about that course, man. I'm, a, I'm obsessed at the moment about building better results for students. We know that, yeah, I love it. That's all, that's all I'm literally doing at the moment is just results, 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 and they're starting to come through. Yeah. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, drop me that email. Drop the email. Let's Ooh. make a difference right now. Yeah, so I'm drawing a line in the sand. Let us know what you're committing to. And if you guys do want to find out more and you've listened to our podcast forever, because we know a lot of you guys do, and then eventually you message us saying, hey, I've listened to your stuff, it's really, really cool. And you actually want to speed up this process and start experiencing better things in your life, for your family, for your clients, all these kind of things, then do the email. And you can also go across to remotefitpro.com forward slash free. And you can book in a call with a member of our team. And we'll happily have a chat. We'll see where you're at. And if you're not a good fit, then we're not going to work for you. Like, how much pleasure do I get in turning people down, George? Oh, lots of pleasure. What happened the other day on your call? <laughs> we had to turn someone down. Because they weren't, weren't 100% being honest. And uh, if you don't fit into uh, the values, if you don't be honest and speak the truth, that's what this is all about, really. Right? Yeah. This is really what but we're that, talking that's, about. That's abundance. Because again, like we're in a position now where it's like, if you're not right for our program, then go away. Because we're only going to take on the best of the best. Yeah. We do, yeah, we want to make sure we create an environment that's absolutely amazing for people. And the only way we can do that is by you know, religiously and relentlessly vetting the people that we let on board. And uh, I think that should be the case for everyone. Maybe not when you're starting out. Yeah, I know, like, like the shit doesn't work like that when you're starting out. But everybody got goals. Yeah, man. Big goals. Nine figures. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, that was a, a real good old ramble that we got out there. But I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the compilations from our guests and uh, our little compilation at the end there. That was fun. It was indeed. Send the email. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. All right, peace. Thanks for listening to the Remote Revolution Show. If you enjoyed the show, please head across to iTunes, YouTube, and our other social media platforms to leave us a quick rating and review. And if you'd like your questions answering, we'd love to hear from you. So please send them into info at remoterevolutionshow.com. And please remember the show is all about growing the remote revolution. So if you wish to join the community and scale your business, then please head over to www.remoterevolutionshow.com or click the link in the show notes to grab our free download. Yes, seriously, don't be lazy. Click the link in the show notes and grab the downloads. And as always, we'll see you next week.